Welcome to Municipal Affairs. In November, members of RMA, Rural Municipalities of Alberta, will gather in Edmonton for their annual fall convention. This year's convention brings a significant change, though. As Pinoca County Reeve Paul McLaughlin, after years of dedicated service in the top job, steps down as president. His departure opens the door to new leadership, with candidates prepared to shape Alberta's future for rural governance. Now, as candidates announce their bids for the RBA presidency, we will be speaking with those candidates about their leadership styles, the vision for the organization, and how they intend to guide Alberta's rural municipalities forward. Today, we are joined by our first candidate, Councillor Ben Fideyev of the Municipal District of Bonneville. We will hear his thoughts on the race and his aspiration for RMA. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, it was announced uh, last week of, as of this airing that you have uh, gotten the approval from your council and you are officially on the ballot for the next president of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. Why now? Why, 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 the, why the presidency right off the bat? <laughs> you know, uh, crazy story. Uh, this might, you know, might sound like I'm making this up, but uh, the true story, like three, four days before I announced it, I had no, no intention of running. Uh, you know, Amber Link uh, has been, been doing a, a great job for the last three years of, uh, of running or, you know, really telling everybody she's going for that job with no qualms hold. Uh, she was a you know, pretty strong candidate. Uh, there was a uh, associated, uh, so all the CEOs were meeting in Leftbridge, I believe. They're having their meeting there, and I got a call from my CEO and saying that, uh, "Hey, I heard a rumor that you're running for RMA," and I'm like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, I says, "I have no intention. Amber's running, and I'm, you know, I'm behind Amber, right? I mean, she's uh, she's done a great job." Uh, with you know, with showing uh, support and and just and, and the drive going forward with this, and, uh, and he's like, oh, okay, so you want me to keep the the rumor going? Rumor going? Do you want me to squash it? I said, I don't, I don't care what you do with it, right? Go for it. So about three days later, I got another phone call, and same thing. I'm like, hey, I heard you're you're running for our May president, and I'm like, what? So I go, no, no, Amber's running. And so they're saying, well, there was kind of rumors out there. There was something else in play. So I wasn't sure. So before I officially made, I got the approval from my council. Before I officially made the announcement, I reached out to Amber. And I said, uh, Amber, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of yours. And uh, I'm, uh, I've been encouraged to run for, for Army President. But if you're running, I, I want no part of this. And she says, you know what? I am, I'm not. And I'm like, what? Uh, so I, I didn't, she didn't give me like any indication of you know, what or whatever. And, but uh, she, you know, she encouraged me to uh, put my name in and I said, okay, uh, sounds good. So yeah, so, so here I am. Uh, I put in my name. I think I was the first one to put my, actually uh, my name in officially. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's good. I mean, I, I've always wanted to do something, something more. Uh, and, and, you know, it, uh, my little world kind of is getting less, less complicated. I have a kid in the second year of university. I have a kid that's grade 12 that's, that's leaving. And, uh, you know, we're, we have um, an offer on one business. The other one's going to get listed. So that's a lot less off my plate. So I, I'm, I'm, 
uh, expected to uh, put in my, uh, you know, jump in with both feet. I'm excited about that. So a rumor goes from a rumor to you actually doing it. And now right? that you've put your name in, you have two months until election day, which is in November. I think it's November 7th right. or November 5th. If I'm not fifth, I think it's the 4th to the 7th in Edmonton yeah. where RMA is going to be meeting. What are you expecting to hear from your RMA members, the people that can vote in this election in November at the convention? Is there things uh -huh. that you're expecting to hear or already are hearing? A bit of both, right? I mean, I'm, I've always been quite heavily involved and, you know, I mean, going through every uh, RMA out there, I, uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed with with uh, talking to other people and, and really engaging it's not what we, you know, what we vote on. It's all the sideline conversations that are really, uh, you know, really meaningful to me. Uh, and and I, I realize that a lot of our pains are are all the same. Uh, you know, a lot of the the downloading issues and and the lack of support for rural. Uh, and I I think those still will resonate. I'm gonna you know do a a great job of getting out there to people and you know right now, but. You know, I mean, just, you know, again, uh, getting back to, you know, bridge infrastructure, uh, you know, our, our municipalities alone, our bridge infrastructure for the next 10 years is $90 million. I just read that, you know, our just had a report of 2.1 something billion dollars that's going to be on the plate for municipalities. Uh, but meanwhile, yet, you know, our provinces is still catering to the energy sector and, and they're, you know, so now we're getting less taxes or no taxes from the, you know, the typical, the, uh, the, the, the people that have skipped out on their taxes. And, but the even quote actually unquote zombie, uh, zombie right, companies yeah. that RMA has called them? A hundred percent. I mean, and, and you know, our, I, I have all, I just have great, I admire Paul. I mean, Paul's been keeping it real. Uh, he, you know, he's not, you know, he's just, he's getting, you know, right to the fact. And that's what I really love about him. And uh, and I know we, somebody needs to continue that message going forward. Uh, again, just my own my own personal opinion. But right now, I've stated that in in my LinkedIn post that uh, you know they know they have rural. Our province knows they have rural. We're always going to be blue. Maybe they don't have to work as hard to you know to get that vote again. Now they're going for a swing vote in Calgary, Red Deer. Yeah, Edmonton's kind of a you know might always be orange, but but you know we're not we're not sure. So I I I think our fight for our rural voice is more important now than ever has been, uh, and I I I just I I truly believe that just by some of the actions and and everything else. So I think we need to continue that that strong rural voice. So you talk about uh, the the provincial government and sort of the uh, the I don't want to say attitude, but the 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 perception that rural sure. Alberta will traditionally vote conservative, and in we, yeah, we yeah. can look at the last few elections, that's yeah. what's happened. Yeah. How do you see yourself as the potential next RMA president, being able to? I don't want to say combat, but also, but I don't want to also say bow down. How do you see yourself being able to stand up to a uh, Danielle Smith, a Rick McIver to ensure that your voices are being heard around that table? Because uh, anyone who is anyone will say that Paul McLaughlin has walked that fine line, but in the last few months, he's probably gone a little bit more tougher because he knows his time is as president's coming to an end. How do you see yourself in fostering that relationship to make sure that rural voices are heard at that at that cabinet table? It is a it is really truly is a fine line, and you know there's a there's a you know there's a thing about being a having a respectful dialogue, and and I think that is that is key. Uh, I know that uh, you know most MLAs slash ministers have a rural background. Their their roots are deep and rural, and it's just a reminder. And I, I and I you know their 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 focus has changed to you know looking at the greater good and and everything else. And I I, I was talking to a, a VP of uh, of a major oil company a little while ago, and I said, "You guys as an industry." have lobbied for years and weekly 
to the government. We 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 have not had those opportunities. And he's like, Well, what do you mean by that? And I'm like, This is you guys have done a great job lobbying. That's all I can tell you. And he kind of smiled. He goes, You think so? I'm like, I know so. Because look at the way the government is is uh, I shouldn't say catering, but listening to you guys, right? And and you know, uh, you know, I I told him about a bridge file. He was kind of like shocked. Uh, he's like, I said, you know, when we're getting less money from the top and our costs of our input costs are going up, you know, our profit margins, we call them profit margins, <laughs> from business background, are getting are getting smaller. And I, I think I think that is an issue. Uh, you know, some municipalities are, are are quite lucky where they have a, a bigger uh, a bigger you know budget they can do that. But a lot of municipalities don't have those luxuries, and they are so tight now. They're just you know now they're looking at layoffs and you know really drastically reducing the service levels that they have. And I think that is uh, that is the issue. And I think we need our we need that rural autonomy, and that uh, we we can't let uh, any government forget that. If you are the successful candidate, you'll be representing many different voices uh, as a president of RMA from the northern corner all the way up in high level, all the way down to Cypress County, from the Crow's Nest Pass, all the way up to Fort McMurray Wood Buffalo. How do you see yourself being able to adapt to the ever challenges that each individual rural municipality brings? Do you think that your background as a counselor for the MD of Bonneville allows you to speak to someone up in the Peace County or down in Cypress Hill, uh, Cypress, Cypress County, I'm going to get that right here, uh, or Crow's Nest Pass or Wood Buffalo? You know what, I'm, I'm like, I'm very open-minded and it's like in my business, you know, our, you know, my, my area of service is, is vast. You know, I, I service anywhere from Sturgeon County, just outside of St. Albert to all the way up to Slave Lake and areas like that. So as a business owner, I've, I've learned to adapt and listen to the needs of the people. I see that no different in this area as well. Like I said, you know, when we've, you know, had our sideline meetings over a cup of coffee or over a beer, I've, I've heard the pains of, you know, Cypress County, of, you know, anybody down there. And, and they're all similar. We have similar rural pains that are across the board. But again, as a, uh, as a, as a potential president, you know, my doors are, will be always be open and I'll, I'll always be learning and I'll definitely be uh, leaning towards, you know, uh, past presidents to, uh, to get their, to get their feedback as well. And I think that's, that is important. We have some, we had two great past presidents and I think, you know, they speak volumes to, you know, to their, to their experience and what they've had, you know, uh, Al and, and, and Paul are, are fantastic. And I, you know, they've always, you know, always said, you know, our phones are always open. Give us a call. So uh, definitely we'll be leaning and asking them and the board itself. The board's fantastic. You have five districts that are represented. They, they do a great job with that. I mean, it's, it's leaning towards your board as well. Yes. Towards the president, but your board as well. They, they have a, they have a strong voice going forward too. So. As you know, you've come on the cross board interviews and you've chatted with me about yourself and the MD of Bonneville. And I've had the pleasure to chat with many different reads across this province. And they talk about the individual issues that are coming up. And you mentioned one briefly, and that is infrastructure. Infrastructure is going to be a big uh, priority for the next president of RMA. Um, what is going to separate you from Paul in ensuring that this file does get addressed in an appropriate time? Or are you sort of just taking it one day at a time right now and waiting until you get at least two weeks under your belt of the announcing your candidacy to talk about how you're going to be different from Paul in regards to files that might not be able to get done by the time this presidency is done? And I, and, and I don't want to sound like you're typical politician and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm going to, I'm going to keep the BS down to a minimum. I really don't know. Right. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, I have some ideas, but you know, when you, when you sit down with the board, what's going to be their direction at the end of the day is, you know, you are there serving the board as well. You are the voice of RMA. You're not the voice of, you know, me, Ben alone. You're the voice of RMA, RMA as a group. And I think that's, that's, that's important. That's an important takeaway from this. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, infrastructure is, is it's, you know, especially bridges, they all build along the same lines. Just, you know, 
the government has placed these service levels for, for the industry as well. So now, you know, when I mentioned that to the, to the VP of, of this energy company, I said, we're looking at shutting down bridges that you guys use right now. There's lack of, you know, money, lack of traffic. And, and he, was, he, was, he was quite shocked. So, I mean, keeping that message going that helping us with the infrastructure is not only good for us, but it's good for everybody, good for energy as well, right? So uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm like quite sure, but I, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can. And, and I don't want to, you know, create a fluff out there of promise and not deliver. Uh, I'll, I'll work my best to keep the, the BS down to minimum. What's your priority number one? If elected, if the members put the faith in you as president of RMA, what will be priority number one on day one? Or if 100 days pass, you and I can have this conversation afterwards and say, uh, President Fadeev, what have you accomplished in your first 100 days? What are you hoping to be able to do as your priority number one if you're elected? I, I think priority number one is, is keeping that strong rule, rule voice going and, 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 and the autonomy of rule. Is, is it, that truly is key. Everything else will fall into place. Uh, you know, you know what it's. What does that mean? I mean, that goes anywhere down from from healthcare down to down to infrastructure. It's, it's all over the place. You know, we, we you know we all struggle with AHS. Uh, you know, I had a little bit of a of a of a health scare over the summer. You know, it, I mean, I had to need any. I needed to get an MRI, uh, and it. You know, I was on the fast track program to get an MRI done. Well, that took two and a half months. And I talked to uh, uh, the radiologist. He goes, ooh, that's quick. And I'm like, really? It's, but it's quicker if I decided to pay myself. I can get it done with a, you know, within a week. What's wrong with that picture? Why can't we use private industry? We're going to pay that 600 bucks no matter what. We're going to pay it to AHS or we're going to pay it to private. Why, why can't we somehow we just try to figure that out and i i think i think it's key i think it's it's key to the cost later on of of, of health care if we can you know uh see some challenges and deal with them right away uh, it, you know it might happen it might be a savings later on so i, I you know healthcare is still it's still a rural urban issue uh I, I and when they looked at it they went back to the old model uh why are we going back to the old model we we failed already we changed it back to another model, why are we not looking at a urban slash rural model by itself? Uh, that, is, that is just one of the pains that I've personally had to experience. And, uh, and yeah, but again, um, I wanna see what, what we have to say as a board uh, versus you know, where, where, where I wanna go. But again, keeping a strong rural voice and, and autonomy is, uh, is totally key. Now, as we're recording this, uh... Uh, RMA president, I'm I'm going to take a gander and I'm going to assume this. I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I apologize. But uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, which RMA is a member of, are meeting in Ottawa this week, and that means Paul McLaughlin, the current president, is there as the next president, potentially next president. You will be uh, guaranteed a seat on the FCM board. That means you will be meeting in Ottawa with municipalities across this country, and you'll be advocating on a national level, not just on a provincial level. How do you see yourself being able to handle the current government? And as of recording this, it's the current government. We don't know what could happen in the next few days, but the current government of Justin Trudeau to ensure that rural voices are heard, but Alberta rural voices where the Liberals have not held a seat since 1968 uh, in Ottawa. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of challenges with it. Uh, everybody thinks that, you know, uh, they're the enemy and everything else. Um, I had a fortunate part of sitting on the board of Community Futures. I was sitting on the board of Community Futures Network of Alberta. So we're kind of at that little bit that mid to higher level uh, input. The the province, sort of the uh, the the current government, Florida, was very open to investing into Western Canada. So we we're you know we, we can't just say you know it's it's us against them. You know there there is some dialogue there, and I I think. It, Again, it's uh, it's not an easy dialogue, but it's a tough dialogue. And I think respectfully, uh, and again with with you know Paul's done a great job of it. He's really made our point come across. And I think it's just it's just keeping that momentum going. And and you know maybe in the next six months, a year, or two years down the road, 
they might just get it. Well, in two years, there'll be an election potentially, and we may have a new government, so they may not need to get it by then. Um, I have for sure, for sure. But, you know, will that government still hear rural Alberta's voice? Right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, yeah, great change government. But, you know, let's see when that happens. Right. Let's see when that happens. And I think, I think it's important for us to still uh, come across with our message. And uh, and it's important. I mean, we're you know we're great partners with with Saskatchewan and you know Manitoba and 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 a good part of uh, of of BC as well. So I think you know coming together and, and forming that one voice and one message coming across is uh, is very uh, you know it's very important and uh, and 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 it's very important for us to do do it together in one voice. So this way the not the squeaky Alberta wheel right those those guys again. I, I don't think we, we, you know, we want to come across that way. Before I let you go, I want to sort of get you to sum up. You might be speaking to some Reeves right now who I know listen, who may not know who you are or may know who you are, but want to get to know you a little bit more. Why should they put their trust in you in November as the next president of RMA? Uh, great question. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I will, I will work hard. I mean, I, I know Paul has put in, you know, 200 plus days. I looked at their AGM file and before I, I need, I need to know what I was getting into. Right. So I looked at the documents, I looked at, you know, there, and it's, it is 200, 200 some days. I know I have a lot to learn. I know my commitment's going to be 200 plus days of, of trying to learn and trying to get up to speed. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, you know, we're, um, we're so fortunate. We, we did have a dedicated, Re, uh, sorry, did I have dedicated Reeve a Pinocchio County slash president to do that? And it's important. So many things that coming into this job, they can ask for less time is is a failure. You have to put in at least two hundred plus days, and I know I can commit to that, and I will commit to uh, to that in my campaign, and I will prove that in my campaign is like I will when I possibly win RMA president. Um, how can people reach out to you? Is there an email address that I can put in the show notes? That way people, members who might have a question or a potential uh, thought on your presidency that they can reach out and give it to you. Absolutely. I'll be, I'll be reaching out to every single member out there in the province. So they will get an email from me soon. So just to let you know my commitment level, but uh, on that part, yeah, it's a uh, B F A D E Y I W. So it's a, uh, Bravo Foxtrot Alpha Delta Echo Yankee Indigo Whiskey at md.bonneville.ab.ca or just the phone number at 780-573. Sorry, that's my personal number. 780-826-1462. I'm cutting that part out there for a second. <laughs> Cut back in. I will link that email address in the show notes for sure, just to make sure that people uh, can just go down and click on it if they want to reach out to the counselor. Uh, yeah, Ben, continue on. Sorry, I was about to. Yeah, not just like I, I like my wife asked the same question. How are you going to get out to the people? I'm like, well, I'm going to email them. Now I'm going to follow up with a call. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, how many municipalities are there? And I'm like, well, there's 69 on average of seven and a half per. She goes what are you insane i'm like maybe i am but that's my commitment to uh you know to our me uh maybe i'll let all my secrets out and and uh my opponents might be uh going oh crap now we got to call everybody but uh, no there's there's some uh some great names that are going to get involved so there's a lot of uh uh you know great names that are going to put in their like in for their nomination and i'm excited about it but uh we'll see where it goes I'm looking forward to it, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, Counselor, to sit down and talk about uh, your candidacy, and I wish you best of luck heading into the election. It's going to be a fun one to watch from an outsider's perspective, and we'll captivate it up in uh, Edmonton in November. So until then. Absolutely. Thanks for reaching out. Appreciate you as always, and uh, take care, and, uh, and for sure, happy travels. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with one of Canada's municipal leaders truly making a difference within their community and hoping to make a difference on the provincial stage. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode.
Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs.